Facebook. Welcome to the counter offer. All right. He doesn't know when I'm going to start because we're live on about 20 different platforms over <laughs> here. <laughs> we're live on Facebook, Twitch, Instagram, MySpace, Friendster. So this week, we are going to be talking about a lot. Are ah. we not? What episode is it? Episode five. Episode five. We've come over a month and we are wow. now right. getting deeper and deeper into better subjects. We can't just talk about the market and the easy subjects. So if you'd like to start out while I grab mine, I should have been more prepared. All right. Yeah, you should have been more prepared. <laughs> I, I, to buy or rent, that is the big question. That is a very big question. It is an opinion piece, but it was in Bloomberg, and I really enjoyed this article. It said, remember when New Yorkers began fleeing the city at the beginning of the pandemic? Escaping to their summer homes in the Hamptons or snapping up houses in the country. Those who dreamed of living in New York suddenly saw an opportunity to make it happen as landlords dropped their rents in desperate effort to now fill empty units. Who wrote this? I know. It really <laughs> is a great article. Uh, you know, it talked about how many hours of work is needed to afford the typical U.S. rent. Wow. Which has hit a record of 64 hours Just in per case week. you didn't want another frying pan across the head. Yeah. No, that's exactly right. So, uh, Holy cow. one quick, Hold on, say that again, 64, 64 hours? 64 hours, but that is across the U.S. So okay. 64 hours, it's a peak. You have to work 64 hours a week. Yeah. No, you don't work 64 no, hours a week. No, no, right? half the time I'm working for the government. <laughs> <laughs> so, sworn New Yorker says, has seen enough to wonder, is it time Hold on, to did you say sworn New That's Yorker? That's what it says. Sworn New Yorker, well, I'll say it. Sworn New yeah, York renter, that license. Aaron Lowry. So that, All right, we're throwing out names out. now. You know, let's see your license. I was going to leave that out. Yeah. Has seen enough to wonder, is, t is it time to consider buying? Finding the cash and the fortitude to tackle the real estate market is an uphill battle that ultimately comes down to how much stability you're looking for and how badly you want to stay where you are. That goes for New York City and anywhere else. Incredible opinion, to be honest. And, you know, well, that's... you know, a good highlight from this is it says high mortgage rates don't make the need for shelter go away. So, you know, that's you're true. either renting or you're buying. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with rents being expensive, you have to work 64 hours a week <laughs> to, uh, to afford. Well, you're about to put rent. a rental up that's going to get, uh, yeah. there you he go. said, hundreds of views. Yeah, so, hundreds, yeah. Uh, if not thousands. Thousands of views, so, one apartment. Yeah, no, that's where uh, I would say a lot of those people should consider buying if they're financially ready for yeah. it and they're committed to New York in the long term. Weird that I had a conversation with someone that was not working with a buyer or not working with an agent right before this, and I had the buyer consultation slash conversion of why you should be working with an agent, and I was giving her inside scoops towards the building. So if you are a tenant and your lease is due and you're not happy with the lease renewal price, I actually, that's a good video on how to actually negotiate. You can't really negotiate now, you know, because they're just going to say, okay, great. We're just going to put it up at a higher price and uh, good riddance, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, there the, is the, value in having a good tenant who pays their rent on time, who keeps the place nice. Yeah. And Depends I didn't on, print yeah. out this article, but it did say that rents have decreased for the first time okay. in a couple months. And it was by like, Why don't you just put a, a pin cushion zero, in my balloon? Point zero 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 eight or <laughs> okay. something. But it, it, you know, it, so it's, it's the valuable. same number. It's good to have yeah. a, a, a good tenant. Because so. it was crazy last year. Yeah. It was like unrecognizable the amount of people. And and of course all the news was like, there's no one in New York. And I'm like, the rents are saying something different. You know, it's another time. Anyway, <laughs> moving on to my first one. So the caption is flat fee brokers. Uh-oh. So flat fee or low fee companies have been growing quickly. We obviously know that here in the city, definitely outside of the city and many times costing. So this is actually looking at from the brokerage point of view. It's very interesting. And the reason being is that the brokerage, whatever is happening with the brokerage is going to affect the clients. It's going to affect the sellers and the buyers. And it could be the services that they actually give out to sellers and buyers. They said that agent productivity in the last 10 years, productivity is down 
And, hmm. and the average brokerage office increased agent count by 87%. They almost doubled what they had in 10 years. Wow. Which is wild. So agent productivity is My down. Agents out there. <laughs> agent productivity is down. And then you have almost double the amount of agents in the last 10 years. This isn't like 1990, this is last 10 years. So from my perspective, the flat fee, actually Gary Keller said this, he said the flat fee is gonna be about a, a pie. Everything's a pie. You're, you're never gonna have just flat fee, you're never gonna have just traditional. Just like retail didn't go out of business. People want the shopping experience. You know, malls may be a different thing, but you know, Amazon, it's gonna put everyone out of business. But you know, you're know you gonna have the flat fee, say remote or it's an estate sale and they just wanna sell it. I just wanna sell it, I don't wanna do anything, I don't wanna fix it up, I don't wanna put any money into it. You know, I'll give you 1% or I'll pay you know $5,000. To be honest, that should really be considered to people who wanna get the highest price because you're not gonna get the highest price if you're a flat fee because you can't afford a good agent. It's, it's unsustainable to sell at the highest price to a flat fee. It's impossible, especially in today's market. Maybe the last six or seven months, but not today. Yeah, no, I, uh, the first thing that came to my head when you mentioned that is you get what you pay for. Yeah. So, you know, that's pretty much how I think about these flat fee places. If you're paying 1% uh, to just the listing agent and not compensating the buyer agent or anything like that, I, I can't you're, imagine that you're getting a uh, successful sale. And it's funny too, because when you actually sit down with a seller and you say, okay, 6% sounds like a lot. And if it goes from six to five, that's a big jump because it's one out of six. But if you say your home is worth a million dollars, and 1% of a million dollars is $10,000. $10,000 on a million dollar property is not a lot. That's easy in negotiation. And we were talking about it before, there's a lot of times where I'll talk to the buyer or the seller and they'll come back to a number, like if I'm working with an agent or I'm working with a direct buyer and I'm like, you know, like they either don't know how to negotiate or they don't care about the deal. You know, there, there's a lot of times where you know, the client knows they got a d good deal and, and, you know, they're very thankful. And it's, you know, a lot of the time it's to someone that's like, listen, I don't really care about the deal. I just want to make my 1%. I just want to make my flat fee rate. So it will be very interesting in the long term what it's like, yeah. especially with traditional brokerages. Mm -hmm. Well, this next article is probably the best article that I've ever brought in. Oh, uh, so I would there's five episodes. definitely recommend reading it. Okay. Uh, since, in the show notes? Yeah. Since we've uh, discussed about, you know, the buyer's market, the buyer's market, everybody's going out saying buyers are in control. They've got the upper hand and it's like you've never seen it before. Yeah. And, you know, I kind of did that. say that it, before. It, on it, the no, call. it is. I mean, yeah. it's very true. And that is the perception for sure. Uh, this article in Forbes said the buyer's market that isn't a battle of data versus perception in New York real estate. Wow. So basically, they're saying that this is not the buyer's market that you are thinking of, or I guess that you're hoping for. Yeah. Uh, and the data that they go through is really uh, backs that up. So there's four going with the numbers. There's four reasons where they say, frankly, as far as buyer's markets go, this one is pretty lousy. No desperate sellers. No obscenely great deals not too many more choices and still plenty of buyer competition and you know i they go into each one and i would this say, is nationally no this is new york oh wow so you know they go in and they talk about the supply they talk about all four points of that and and you know i really enjoyed reading the article having the data i mean it is it's all about the numbers yeah yeah i would uh Looking at current inventory levels, the average last sale date for units on the market is roughly, today is roughly 2014, when the median price was 830. The current median asking price is 1.4 million, suggesting that sellers <laughs> still have plenty of room to go before desperation sets in. So, and, and, and they said uh, average discount on the price is 6%. 
is under yeah. and under six percent. Yeah. So you know, when everybody's looking for that ten percent off or anything like that, I mean, you end up really only about six percent off, which is uh, historically not the best buyer's market. Yeah. So I would highly recommend reading this uh, great article to send around to your buyers. Yeah, I would say to that point is that the pricing is has already been calculated to the market. So it's not like this thing happened suddenly and now we have to drop it 10%. It already was listed at a number that is probably sustainable, if you know what I'm saying. So in other words, if it's listed correctly, it's at market rate. Mm -hmm. So when people say, like, this is the thing, is that if you're looking for a deal, deals don't just like appear, okay? Because you're thinking, oh, I got $200,000 off the asking price. That doesn't happen. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so it's, 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 you know, like, or even 10%. However, if you historically look at, say, building sales of that unit, say the similar size or the area, and you go, actually, historically, it's 150,000 off the asking price, which is 10%, which is a home we just sold. And I call the buyer and I'm like, listen, in six years, you're gonna be able to sell this for 10% because you're getting it at 5% less. You're gonna, it's gonna go back to normal and then you're gonna get 5% on top of that. And she understood it. She literally came with a spreadsheet and she's like, this is the number I'm gonna pay. So I had to go back to the sellers. So if you're smart about it, it's not about the current price, it's the historical price within the building. And there's a lot of them that are very, <laughs> they're way below market. And, and I'll just say this also to the inventory, at one of the places that we just sold, I was just having this buyer con con consultation uh, <laughs> right before this. And I said, you know, when we had it on the market, there was about seven competing studios. I just went on right now, there's one. Yeah. So to your point is that inventory is definitely low. It's definitely low. Like there's- Especially as we go into the new year. Yeah. The listings from this moment on are probably only going to be coming down. Yeah. You know, uh, very rare to see listings going up on the holidays. Yeah. And believe it or not, it's already November 1, so- It's wild. Uh, Thanksgiving and everything, it's gonna be, you know, if you're not listing now, I don't think there's even a shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and someone was talking about listing now, and it's like, wait till next uh, year. Yeah, what are you doing? What are you doing? If wait you're buying, next rate hike. <laughs> <laughs> if you're buying though, definitely get it now because they've been probably sitting on the property. So moving on, talking about data. So this is actually the president of Remax on tech. So Nick Bailey said he was when he left the brokerage. And he went to market leader. So market leader is a CRM for real estate. And it was acquired by Trulia. Okay, Trulia, Zillow, Street Easy, Rent Hop, you know, they're all owned by the same company. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just all one big conglomerate of a database. They bought, Trulia bought, this just shows the power of data. Trulia bought that company known as market leader for $344 million. And wow. Nick Bailey, who's the president of Remax, when he left and he went to, he, cause he was part of market leader. When he left, he said, there is now a database to grab leads and stay tight on the consumer. That's it. This whole game that's being played by all these new brokerages, uh, you know, out in San Francisco that are building all these AI and, and just all these conglomerations, Trulia, Zillow, Street Easy, Compass. It's all about, you know, even um, what's his name at Keller Williams. He talked about that we must be the entire process of the home sale. So in other words, we're not just selling your home. We could give you mortgage. We could give you insurance. We can give right. you, uh, you know, your your title. We also have home cleaning. We also have a renovation. We have, it's like everything. It's the, it's the full loop. And I, they're all going to be fighting over this. There's 400 or 344 million is a crazy price. It's <laughs> a wild yeah. price. Yeah, that is. Uh, super just for crazy. data. Might have overpaid there. Yeah, just but, for data. Uh, you're right. With the brokerages, their you know sales are down, so they're trying to diversify into all of these uh, other types of businesses. Yep. So that's been pretty interesting to watch. Obviously, the best way to do it is through acquiring a company, but instead of building it, 344. That's 
high. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, he probably had a good payout, and then he went to Remax, and now he's president. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he probably Nick's has, like, he listen, probably this had a is stake great. in that company. Yeah. <laughs> 344. When I left that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it just shows a lot of these companies are going to be pouring money into tech. However, what, what was I, I was talking about it today is that emails, it's tough to get things across. Right. I pick up the phone. It's a still, it's still a personal business. Someone doesn't want, you're, they're making the biggest purchase of their life. They don't want like an AI. I was, I was having a <laughs> fight with an AI for Amazon trying to, you know, put my, and I was like, put me through it to someone that can print me the return label. And it's, it'll be interesting the coming years, what happens. <laughs> Well, welcome right. back to the uh, the counter offer, episode number five. We're gonna be coming back uh, next Tuesday, yeah. and live. Check it out on the YouTube channel. Yeah, YouTube. We're on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn has a video limit, ten minutes. That's strange. Come on, LinkedIn. Oh, really? Yeah, huh. yeah. They said well, maybe no. Maybe we should. Uh, wow, fifteen minutes. Yeah. All right. We're not talking less. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, it's going to be tough. Let's be real. It's going to be tough. All right, guys. Well, enjoy your Tuesday. Talk